I'm pleased you could make it to this meeting, Rachel Alucard. I suppose long time no see would be the appropriate response. In your subjective time, it has been 19,792 hours, 41 minutes, 52 seconds. Correct. For us, it has been 283,875 hours, 18 minutes, 24 seconds. The difference between our subjective times is irrelevant. How much of a discrepancy is there right now? There is an observed 1 in 940,000 deviation from the predicted numbers. Oh, interesting. You're saying almost nothing has changed? Rachel Alucard, I think it is safe to say that there has been no change whatsoever. Even your hair remains unchanged. So, nothing has changed. Although the word miracle is not exactly in our vocabulary, wouldn't you agree that your existence itself is a miracle of sorts? Correct. We have, however, observed a rather intriguing change in the behavior of a certain mind. Have you summoned me here simply to tell me that? Why did you lift Restriction Zero, Rachel Alucard? We, we wish, wish to, to know, know what, what you are, are trying, trying to, to do with the Tsukuyomi unit. unit. Whatever my intentions for the Tsukuyomi unit, they have nothing to do with you. Incorrect. Your actions in regard to the Tsukuyomi unit will impact our goals. We are currently re-evaluating the man's worth. Indeed. Your actions do not seem to be entirely logical or even completely rational. Ragna the Blood Edge may be the origin, but he isn't where we should be focusing at this point. We cannot understand what makes Ragna the Blood Edge so valuable, Rachel Alucard. I assume you are well aware of the value and significance of the Tsukuyomi unit? Correct. It is impossible that Ragna the Blood Edge has greater value than the Susanoo unit. This is our conclusion. I do not think his value is something you will ever understand. We do not wish to meddle in your affairs. That much we will admit. That is why we accept the phenomenon that has occurred. Affirmative. We will accept and then select appropriately. Select? So you fancy yourselves gods now? Negative. Takama Gahara is a system built by humans. Anything which has been built by humans can never be designated as a god. Furthermore, once a god has been observed, it can no longer continue to exist as a god and becomes nothing more than a thing. Affirmative. The master unit is no exception. And of course, the successor to the Azure, Noel Vermilion, is also governed by this rule. Which is why, Rachel Alucard? We would like to ask if you wish to become an observer of the Boundary once again. I very much enjoy keeping dogs as pets. My desires are not so twisted that I wish to become a lapdog myself. Rachel Alucard, the outer perimeter is much closer to Takamagahara than you think. Before you abandon the duties you have already accepted, please consider the amount of time that has already been invested in this endeavor. Oh? I'm afraid I don't recall the precise amount. Your response has been recorded and analyzed. We take it your answer is no. How unfortunate. I had hoped things were going to be getting a little more enjoyable here again. Still, we had predicted that this would be the choice you would make. 
We have already begun observation of the snake. Then you were responsible for Teremi's release. Affirmative. We expect significant risk in initializing the destruction process. He is really something of a maverick. Even we cannot govern him at times. As such, we have prepared an exit strategy. An exit strategy? Dare I ask what that might be? Negative. We are unable to provide an answer to that query. Doing so would constitute unintended intervention. Then you truly intend to reduce the world to nothing? Nothing? Oh, don't be foolish. That would be pointless. The world Takamagahara creates simply needs to be correct. In such a world, there would be no need for the master unit. It would only cause distortion. Affirmative. Distortions caused by the master unit are currently being considered along with other possible outcomes as a result of the continuum shift. The phenomena intervention of the master unit cannot be measured. As such, we spend too much time repairing its mistakes. We do not need any more accidents. Affirmative. Takamagahara will initiate reconstruction without the intervention of the master unit. Once again, the world will be back in the Azure. Affirmative. The Azure will inherit the Takamagahara. So long as the Azure exists, the world will exist as well, no matter what form it may take. All forms of life return to the world of the Azure. This is a dream. Visions of someone else's memories. Their thoughts with no substance, like a perfume that lingers a moment after its wearer has already passed by. They're the scent of the history that once was. Shards of the truth. Please, just don't do anything dangerous anymore, alright? I'll help you with whatever you want, I promise. So please... <sighs> alright, Trinity Glassfield. I understand. Yes. Tinum. Hey, Platinum. <laughs> platinum, wake up. <laughs> After no little coaxing, the little the girl, Platinum, finally opens her eyes. What the hell? Can't you see I was in the middle of a good nap? Break time's over, meow. Take a look over there. Platinum notices that Tokaka's acting even more stealthy than usual. She deigns to look across the thicket. Man, the torpedoes! That bastard's huge! What is that thing? Shh, meow. Yeah, Luna, be quiet. What are we gonna do if it spots us? You piss yourself and Luna will kick its ass! For all her bravado, Luna is keeping her voice down to a whisper. She's a strange girl indeed. Todakaka, the young girl accompanying her, is by no means your normal girl herself, but next to Platinum, she may as well be one of the run of the mill. You see, multiple spirits dwell within Platinum. A brash little girl named Luna, a plate lad named Senna, and lastly... Kick its ass? Oh, Luna, why is violence always the solution with you? Besides, that guy looks really strong. I don't think we stand a chance. Excuse me? I could take that whatever it is any day of the week! Quiet, both of you. Meow. Torakaka steps in and ends the argument. It's not our first time having to play the peacemaker between the two very different personalities. Not by a long shot. She's used to it by now, which is both helpful and ever so slightly depressing. That's Sector 7's Red Devil, Meow. He must be headed to Kagutsuchi. Kagutsuchi? Isn't that where we're going? Gosh, I guess Sector 7's getting involved too. Something about this bothers me. Let's tail him.
This is probably as good a spot as any. Now, why don't you show yourself? So you've noticed me. Rather impressive, Mr. Red Devil. Hey, tub of guts! Yeah, you! You want a piece of this? I'll rearrange your face! C calm down, Luna! I'm picking up dual signals from that child. It's rather... strange. Strange? You looked in the mirror recently, tomato face? At least we don't look like a red fire hydrant. Hmm. Uh, Luna, I don't think you had to specify the color. Suck it, wimp. Platinum, hush! I'll handle this. Red Devil of Sector 7, my name is Torakaka. Now, and this is Platinum. I hope you can forgive this one's mouthiness. We're not hostile, I promise you. Then why were you tailing me? It seemed like our destinations were one and the same. That's why you piqued my interest. Truth be told, I don't have a firm grasp of what's going on there right now. Kagutsuchi, you mean? The 13th Hierarchical City? Yes. If it's not a bother, could we perhaps accompany you? What? We're trying to keep a low profile on the road, Meow. If we stick with you, we'll be much safer from random attacks in the forest. In return, I'll show you the secret passage into Kagetsuchi from the Kaka village. What do you think, Kokonoi? Normally I'd have you tell her to bugger off. But I'm interested in this so-called secret passage through the Kaka village. Yeah, sure, team up. Roger that. Many thanks, Meow. It's just as well. I wasn't thrilled about the idea of leaving young women in the forest by their lonesome anyway. Shall we move along? Lead the way, Sir Hydrant! Let's go. This is as far as I can take you. What? Ah, oh, come on, Red. Don't be a stingy bastard. At least feed us before you ditch us. I don't know any restaurants that cater to young children. I'm sorry. Thank you for your help, Meow. My pleasure, ma'am. Now, if you'll excuse me. Hmm. All Lord Jubei told me was to bring you to Kagutsuchi. What happens now? Now, we go do our thing by ourselves. Hey, don't worry. Luna's got it covered. What? Are you sure we're gonna be okay, just the two of us? Dude, I said I got it covered. Don't make me say it a third time, Senna. Come on. Hey, Luna, wait up! I hate running. I hope she knows what she's talking about. Hey, Luna, are you sure we're going the right way? I don't like this place. It smells weird and looks icky and gives me the creeps. Nah. Luna pushes forward, ignoring Senna's worried commentary. Senna finally falls silent, tired of trying to reason with the headstrong Luna. Before long though, he's at it again. This cycle repeats more than once. Luna comes to a stop in front of a particularly large pile of debris. Uh, Luna? Well, shit, I'm lost. What? I kept asking if you knew where you were going. How come you didn't say anything? What are we gonna do? Shut it, Senna. I didn't see you busting out a map, you know. Well, um, I guess we should just turn around and go back the way we came. What in the hell? Luna, I don't think we're alone down here. <coughs> it's a ghost. It's slimy and it smells like ass. I don't think it's a ghost. It's in you smell so smell it smell right. Delicious. I... I think it's trying to speak. Hey, swamp ass! Quit mumbling, why don't ya? Luna, this guy seems really dangerous.
Whoa! Back off, freak! Alright, guess I gotta kick it ass. <laughs> now you're about to see the most random ass character in this series. Cause she looks like a magical girl. <laughs> and she kinda fights like one too. <laughs> oh god. The will Look at her. Taunting. I mean, I ain't complaining. Rebel one. She packs a punch. Action. I couldn't hit about the third. But yeah. She's the most ridiculous guy. Damn. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I don't have to get down there. Oh, yeah. If you grab Luna, she counters out of it. She generally goes, hands off, you know. And then she cuts just like a lager. Goodbye. Oh, yeah, I went to the bottom. Go. Oh, bad. Bombs work. Bow before the magical girl. <laughs> na, 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 na. Suck it, Bungus Face. That's what happens when you try to get all bad touch on Luna. <laughs> Out of Knee's tar like body trembles in pain. He slows back into the refuse and shadows from whence he came. Gosh, you ran away. What'd I tell you, Senna? We don't need somebody looking out for us. We got this. But we're still lost. Yeah, well, don't worry about it. As long as we keep walking in a straight line, we'll end up somewhere, yeah? <laughs> Come on, it'll be an adventure. Somebody, anybody, help. This is Odian Town, a district of washing color and life, regardless of the hour. A young girl clad in a cape and hood makes her way through the crowd. Oh, thank goodness we made it back to civilization. I wasn't sure we were gonna make it. This is the part where you thank Luna for being rad. Thank you for being rad, Luna. I think we got here despite you, not because of you. Drop it, smartass. Man, I'm starving! Fighting that stench monster made me hungry! Really? Duh, Senna! Aren't you hungry from all that whining? Oh, crap! Spotting a familiar face amid the throng, Platinum dashes for cover. She peeks out from hiding to take another look at the man. Senna! It's him! Him who? Ragna the Blood Edge, you idiot! Don't tell me you forgot already! Ragna the Blood Oh! And not so distant memory flashes to life in a corner of Platinum's admittedly cramped mind. Again? Son of a bitch! I, I guess we're just not very good. <laughs> Don't get your knickers in a twist, kiddo. It ain't like you never messed up trying to use ours magas before. So? It pisses me off every time! And then you're all, <laughs> and that pissed me off even more! I'm sorry, I'll try to be good. <laughs> yeah, you're doing it again, damn it! Um, are you sure it's okay for us to be using this? Platinum held the brightly colored staff out to Juve. Juve grinned at the glum little girl. The Nox Nictoris Arma Rebois, Muchori. It's a mouthful, kiddo. And a handful, too. Right now, it's out of your league. But, the Nox Nictoris chooses who wields them. And the staff picked you, little scamps. All you gotta do is live up to that potential. The potential sucks. I wanna be badass now! Besides, Ars Magus is tough to use. Well, you should've seen my last student. Kid was hopeless. You're better right now than he ever was. So we're better than someone who was dreadful? That's sort of a compliment, I guess. You really had a student who was that much of a tard? You better believe it. Ragna the Blood Edge was his name. Hell of a rascal, that one. A real handful, rebellious. 
and right full of himself. But man alive, could that kid talk the talk. Huh? He talked back to you, Master Jubei? <laughs> How stupid was he? <laughs> Young fella was pretty headstrong. But he was a good kid at heart. I'm sure you'll cross paths with him one of these days. He had a younger brother and sister back in the day. I think the two of you would get along like peas and carrots. If Master Jubei's talking about some mouthy tard, why does he look so happy? Ugh, it chaps my ass just thinking about it. How dare Master Jubei be so happy talking about you, Ragna the Suck Edge? So that's Ragna? He's not exactly what I was expecting. Eh, screw it. Let's make him buy us food. B but why? Because I'm starving and he's an idiot. Duh. Okay, Senna, you're up. Huh? Here he comes, Senna. Do your thing. I know, I know. Senna's eyes lock onto his target. His white hair and red jacket make losing him in the crowds almost impossible. He comes closer. Closer. Senna gets ready to make his move. A small hand darts out from nowhere and latches onto Ragnar's leg made step. Whoa, what the fuck? So hungry. Ragnar's face goes completely white as though he's seen a ghost. A few minutes later, his terrified cry echoes through the streets of audience up. <laughs> alright, alright, I'll buy you some damn food, okay? Jeez, why does this always happen to me? Who taught this kid all these cons anyhow? There's something familiar about him. Oh man, am I full! <laughs> that was really delicious, wasn't it, Luna? How do you eat so much? You've only got one stomach, right? Look at this bill, you pig! Zzz. Not my problem. You're the adult, so you foot the bill, dumbass. Hey! This dumbass saved your ass from starving on the damn curb, remember? Calling him like I see some dumbass. You got a problem with that, Baldy? That doesn't even make sense. I've got plenty of hair. Shut up, you dumb, perverted, idiotic, mouth-breathing, knuckle-dragging, pointy-haired pedophile! P p p p pedophile? Well, I'm full. No point wasting any more time with you. Senna, let's blow this taco stand. Uh, thank you very much, Ragna. Hey! Hey, where the hell do you think you're going? Places to go, people to see. What? Hey, let go of me, you pervert! No, damn it! I'm not getting stuck with this bill! Die, creep! Oh! Stupid, stupid, stupid! Stupid! If you ever come near me again, I'm gonna stomp your balls flat! <coughs> that little bitch. I swear the next time I see her... Um, sir, I hear you say something about Bill. Is that a problem? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, about that. You see, I didn't want to resort to this, but I've got no choice. Yeah, there's problem. I'm Rodney the Blood Itch, a.k.a. the Grim Reaper. This meal better be on the house, unless you feel like dying to- Stop kidding, mister. Wanted posters all over town. Ragnar Blood Edge look nothing like you. He's so ugly. Look at poster. Jeez, it's the wanted poster from the library. I swear they had a four-year-old draw that shit. Oh, wait, wait. I get it now. You have no money. So you pretend to be ugly criminal. You know fool me. You pay for every folds you eat. I'm telling you, lady, I'm the guy from the poster. Master, I find new dishwasher boy. That's what I like to hear. Wait, you got it all wrong. Oh, damn that stupid brat. <laughs> 